Welcome to episode 86, Elizabeth Holmes, 8 Lessons of a Dropout Self-Made Billionaire. This is an outline of episode 86. Lesson number one, she dropped out twice. First, she dropped out of Stanford University at age 19 to pursue her dream. Second, in 2016, she dropped out of the list of self-made billionaire. In 2017, Forbes magazine estimates her net worth to be zero. So this is Elizabeth Holmes. In 2003, uh, Ms. Holmes dropped out of Stanford University. She was a chemical engineer. Each year, 7 to 10 percent of self-made billionaires drop out, meaning the net worth is now less than one billion dollars. Well, startup dying or failing is also very common. Then what makes the Elizabeth Holmes story so interesting? She's a woman uh, who runs a company, which is, which is, you know, an anomaly among all the, the white men out there that are running these startups. Um, she is actually working on a company that is perceived to be changing the world. And people were like, OK, this is perfect. This fits our little narrative that we've been putting out there for so long. And she was able to capture that. Um, and, and I think that as a result, everyone stood behind her. And once That's a number two. Her number two at Theranos, the top scientist, committed suicide in May 16, 2013. Who is Mr. Number Two at Theranos? Why did he commit suicide? Ian Gibbons is an Englishman. He's a graduate of Cambridge University. He was a veteran of 30 years in diagnostics when he was introduced to Elizabeth Holmes in 2005 by Holmes advisor at Stanford, Professor Shanning Robertson. He's 34 years older than Elizabeth Holmes. He worked eight years at Theranos. Why did he commit suicide? According to his wife, Elizabeth Holmes was about to fire him, so he committed suicide. Question, why would a top scientist, 67-year-old and with cancer, commit suicide? He cannot be afraid of being fired. I cannot solve this. It is totally baffling. I believe it was late 2003 to found Theranos, and within about 18 months, she hired uh, Ian Gibbons, uh, who was a, a British biochemist chemist who had worked in Silicon Valley at various okay. companies for a long time, very well respected scientist in his field. Um, and he, he for sure was among the early employees, the early- Okay, founding uh, team uh, might be a better term. Be better. He was there eight years. Gotcha. So gotcha. he's a f in my mind, and and uh, that's the reason we wrote about it, and we included it in that first front page story on October fifteenth. Uh, that, but what we did say in the papers that Rochelle Gibbons, Ian's widow, um, told me that uh, that Ian had told her on numerous occasions before his death that uh, things were not working. Nothing is working was her quote, right? Nothing is working. So lesson number three, Elizabeth Holmes' hero is Steve Jobs. So the number two of Theranol, Mr. Ian Gibbons, suicide in 2013 would be like Steve Wozniak committing suicide. Here are some more Steve Jobs imitations. First, her invention, the Edison, looks like Steve Jobs' next machine. Second, he dresses the same black turtleneck like Steve Jobs. I think the first piece is realizing that it's not necessarily about age. And um, people like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and the Google guys and Michael Dell and Larry Ellison and others have, have demonstrated that. Listen, number four, pedigree does not guarantee success. First, her grandfather was a medical inventor. Second, she dropped out of Stanford University, home of so many startups in Silicon Valley. Third, she was a president scholar, high IQ, strong will, beautiful. Lesson number five, no data means big trouble. It's stuff that's applicable to all of you. Who's in a medical device company? Yeah, well, most of you, right? So you're going to have to learn this stuff anyway, so might as well go through it in context of Theranos. So with that being said, let's just uh, get started here. So. This is my, one of my favorite sentences, and it is so apropos to this, right? 
in God we trust, all others bring data, right? Absolutely. This is, if Theranos would have kind of followed this, this model, um, I think we would be in less trouble than we are today. However, you know, if you look at what Theranos has been, you know, coming out with in the press and Elizabeth Holmes and her statements, you know, they believe that that's, that's the case. And they might have valid data, we, we just haven't seen the extent of it quite yet. So who knows who this is? Trivia question. William Deming, sound, uh, sound familiar? Father of modern quality, okay, so he's... Lesson number six. The big difference between the public and the private face could be a smoke screen. I mean, to, to be fair to Hirsch, this, this um, uh, you know, circuit of public speaking and, and appearing in the media had started, uh, you know, in, I would say, late 2013. So she had been doing it for quite a while. But when I tried to ask for uh, an interview the first time uh, in April of last year, I was uh, more or less ignored. And then I continued to ask repeatedly uh, for interviews and for, uh, uh, you know, to be allowed to visit uh, the company and to, to speak to Elizabeth uh, and her number two in person over the ensuing five months. And um, they just would not, uh, they, they just continued to decline. And it became surreal because as you say, um, the intensity of her public uh, appearances, if anything, picked up. Um, she went on Charlie Rose. She um, kept pretty much doing, you know, interviews with every other uh, media organization. She gave an interview to Glamour magazine. Uh, she went to this conference and that conference. Um, but behind the scenes, she was just not willing to talk to the, to the Wall Street Journal and to, to face up to and, and answer some of the questions that I was asking. Okay. Lesson number seven, startups died of self-inflicted wounds. Famous quote from Paul Graham of Y Combinator. Do not invest in a concept without proof of purchase and a working prototype. Private equity pour in almost $700 million. 13 years later, a single drop of blood test is still a concept. Lesson number eight, the future of healthcare democratization. It was and still is a great idea. I think another brilliant entrepreneur will solve the blood testing problem one day. You know, another thing was this whole empowering of patients. So delivering the results right to you, not having to get screened out through a physician. This was really the, the, the patient empowerment movement was really emerging in, the, in you know, 2005, 2006, 2007. And that continued with the Theranos promise. They basically wanted to make sure you had access to everything and be you had transparency to everything before you actually underwent this test thank you for watching please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below wishing everyone peace and prosperity